Why is front squatting more difficult than back squatting when using the same weight? Welcome to Biomechanics 101. When sports scientists analyze athletes, they often investigate the different forces that are produced during movement. Torque is one of the different parameters that are often studied. Torque is the force that causes rotation around a joint. Torque is often explained as an illustration of a wrench turning a bolt. The length of the wrench is a lever arm. When it's pulled down, it creates a rotational force, torque, that turns the bolt. To understand how torque affects the body, try holding a dumbbell out in front of yourself at shoulder height. The weight of the dumbbell is being pulled down by gravity. This creates rotational force at the shoulder joint. This force is torque. The muscles of the shoulder must then be activated in order to overcome this force and hold the weight from moving. In order to calculate torque, we need to understand how long the moment arm is. This is the distance from the point of force, or the dumbbell in this case, to the point of rotation, which is the shoulder joint. The moment arm is always calculated at 90 degrees or a perpendicular to the pull of gravity. If you now hold that dumbbell above your head, let's say at a degree of 120, you're going to have different forces sustained at the shoulder joint you'll have actually less torque. This is because the moment arm becomes shorter. Even though your arm, the lever arm in this case, stays the exact same length because the moment arm is always calculated at a perpendicular to the force of gravity, which always pulls straight down. To see how we can analyze torque during the back squat. An efficient squat will always have the bar positioned over the middle of the foot. This leaves your body in balance and allows you to use your muscles efficiently. This bar now becomes your center of gravity, and when it pulls straight down, it creates moment arms. We can use the distances of the moment arms of the knee and the hip to calculate torque if we also know the angle that the body is placed in, because that's usually where the most torque is generated during the back squat. This variation places the bar 2 to 3 inches lower on the back than the high bar back squat. It's commonly used by powerlifters as it enables them to lift heavier weights. As you can see, the change in bar position increased the length of the hip moment arm and decreased the length of the knee moment arm. This is going to change the angles of the body during the squat. As you can see, the knee angle is now at 120 degrees, which is more open than the high bar squat and the hip and back angle are now at 40 degrees, a smaller or more closed angle. This is because the bar is now held on the chest. It requires, therefore, a more vertical trunk position in order to keep the bar positioned over the middle of foot and allow the body to remain in balance. Because of this bar position, we're going to have a longer knee moment arm and a shorter hip moment arm. If we again freeze frame this squat in the parallel position, we see a knee angle of 130 degrees, which is smaller or more closed compared to both back squat techniques. Also, the hip and back angles are going to be larger or more open compared to the back squat techniques, 